I declare the 2017 Dickinson State University Fall Commencement open. Good afternoon. Please be seated. I'm Carmen Wilson, and I have the privilege of serving as the DSU Provost and Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. Graduating students, family, and friends, honored guests, faculty, and staff, welcome to Dickinson State University's Fall Commencement Ceremony. The processional music was provided by Dr. Brent Rogers. Prelude music was provided by the DSU Jazz Ensemble, conducted by Jeremy Wolitz. Thank you. As a housekeeping reminder, please turn off your cell phones and any other noise-making devices you might have, like swirly things you use on New Year's. Hold that for the end. Graduating students, this is your day, and what a great day it is. Today's ceremony represents the conferral of your academic degree. It marks your completion of your Dickinson State University academic program of study, but not the end of your education or your journey of lifelong learning. Displayed on the, on the stage today are the flags of the home countries of our graduating international students and tribal flags of our graduating American Indian students, as well as our own flags of the United States of America, North Dakota, and DSU. Now I would like to introduce the members of the platform party. Please stand briefly as I call your name. Dr. Thomas Mitzel, President, Dickinson State University. Mr. Marty Parsons, inter uh, Mr. Marty Parsons, Vice President of Finance and Administration, I got that. Dr. Ken Hott, Interim Associate Provost and Dean of Instruction. Mr. Mike Ness, Board Member, North Dakota State Board of Higher Education. And Ms. Chandra Klusman, Member, Dickinson State University Alumni Association. Department Chairs, please stand briefly as I call your name. Dr. Bill William Harris, Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. Dr. Stephen Doherty, Department of Social Sciences. Dr. Chip Poland, Department of Agriculture and Technological Studies. Mr. Thad O'Donnell, Department of Health and Physical Education. Dr. Marianne Marsh, Department of Nursing. Dr. Renee Ekstrand, Department of Teacher Education. And Dr. Holly Grulke, <coughs> excuse me, School of Business and Entrepreneurship. Yeah, I got this cold just in time to emcee this big event. So um, I would also like to extend a special welcome to Ms. Rhonda Mitzel. Our signer for our guests and students who are helping hear the hearing impaired is Ms. Ann Robinson. Thank you, Ann. I would like to invite President Mitzel to the podium for his opening remarks. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. I always get a little verklempt when I speak my wife's name, too, so if you didn't do anything, <laughs> anything any differently there. So <clears throat> my name is Tom Mitzel, and I officially want to welcome you to the seventh fall commencement at DSU. What a wonderful day we're having, and, and I, we have a full auditorium. This is so wonderful to see everybody here in the celebration of, of what is going to be a great event. I'm going to ask all of the graduates, or all the soon-to-be graduates, to stand up, please. So for the last three to six years, we've been pushing you, bending you, prodding you, keeping you up late, uh, probably ass assuring that you swear, curse our names late into the evening on certain occasions. And we always told you that it would be worth it. And here you stand today, uh, ready to go across the stage and, and receive the degree which you uh, have, have so righteously earned. But I want for you right now to turn around and face the crowd and take a look at everybody who helped get you to where you are today because nobody's journey, nobody's road is traveled alone. And you could, not have been, you could not have gotten to where you are today without the help of your family, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your enemies, <laughs> your, your, those who debate you endlessly. So 
I want for the students right now, we'll be cheering for you much of this afternoon, but right now if you could give a round of applause to those people who got you here today. Just go ahead and sit down, thank you. So it's always a, a really a special time to share this accomplishment, a time to reflect, to ponder, to plan, and to continue dreaming. This is really the first step upon your academic road, and you will be learning each and every day from now until you leave this earth. And I hope if we've taught you nothing else, we've taught you that this is really just the beginning of your education and not the culmination of your education. But I'd like to um, speak a little bit about <clears throat> a person who has made North Dakota somewhat famous and a person for whom North Dakota made somewhat famous, and that is, is Theodore Roosevelt. We are very well steeped in Theodore Roosevelt lore in Dickinson, North Dakota, Medora, and Theodore Roosevelt had a ranch at the Elkhorn Ranch just about 30 miles north of Medora. And in 1910, during a speech that he delivered in Fargo, North Dakota, he stated, I would not have been president if it had not been for my experience in North Dakota. Well, you would not be graduates today had it not been for your experience in North Dakota. Those of you who have grown up here, those of you who have, who have come in from other, other states and other countries. And I think much of what Theodore Roosevelt went through during his time here is very apt for what you have gone through and where you will continue on your journey. Theodore Roosevelt came out to North Dakota in 1883, in his words, to kill a buffalo, which was a little strange since they were becoming extinct. Um, and Theodore Roosevelt always called himself a, a conservationist. He set aside 250 million acres for conservation and, and national parks. But his thought of taking out a buffalo at that time was if they were going to become extinct, somebody had to shoot one to have it mounted in a museum so that generations to come would always be able to enjoy that, that animal. Now luckily, he did, he did kill his buffalo, um, and luckily they did not become extinct. He actually helped save them by starting a zoo in New York where they took some of the, the bison and, and put them in to start to regrow the herds once again. So he did very well. But at that time, he noted that, in his words, North Dakota was an interesting place. And it was an interesting choice for him. He grew up in, in New York. He loved the outdoors, but he came from a wealthy family and was very used to the comforts of home. So when he arrived, the day he arrived in North Dakota, he ended up sleeping in a room with 22 other people. And that was his introduction. He arrived at a little past midnight, spent the evening sleeping with strangers, and gave up many comforts to begin his new, his new life. And I won't, um, he, he spent much of his time between 1883 and 1887 in North Dakota. And if you think about it, that's not much of a different time period than is your, your higher education today. So what did he learn during that time? Well, he was 24. It was a perfect time for him to, to grow beyond his previous boundaries and to try new adventures and to push his limits. He's a little bit older than the average student today, not much. Same eagerness, same aggressiveness, same dreamy qualities that you all have, and I hope you always keep them. Theodore Roosevelt did. But he began as an outsider, as many, many people do when they go somewhere new. He was ridiculed, called him four eyes. He hated that. And the cowboys out here were not wants to, uh, if they want to give you a hard time, they're going to give you a hard time. And in fact, early on, he had gone out to get dinner at a local saloon, and one of the ruffians had come in, and, and this ruffian was inebriated and was shooting his guns and scaring the folks, and he started giving Theodore Roosevelt a hard time and was telling Roosevelt he had to buy everybody in the, in the entire place a drink, and Roosevelt wouldn't stand for that. And he ended up knocking this cowboy out. Nobody thought Four Eyes could do this. But he had toughened. He had become this person. And when they asked him afterward, he said, I want you to enjoy your dinners. He had to be removed. So it was a great learning. That's it's a bit of an odd tale. But it's one where he had to stand up for himself. He also had his boat stolen. And he went after the thieves, got two of his, two of his friends to go with him. He went after the thieves, caught the thieves, brought them back, ended up to walk 53 miles with them to bring them to Dickinson so that they could be tried for the theft of his boat. And during this time, he took with him, when they were chasing the thieves, a book for himself to read. He read Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. And he read this so he could stay awake. He had to stay awake for a little over 48 hours. He's afraid if he fell asleep, they would overpower him and, and run off. So he stayed awake 
for a little over 48 hours, and he ran out of, he, he finished Anna Karenina, Karenina. And so he, one of the thieves, he noted, had a book on Jesse James. So he asked if he could borrow that book, and he read the thieves' book after he finished his own. And he actually stayed in touch with some of the thieves after they, they went to jail. His thought was to help them, help them through. So during his time with all of these, he, he, he helped with cattle roundups. Ran his, he broke his collarbone, getting flipped from his horse. He broke his own horses, did all of these adventures. And he discovered himself. He discovered his limits, his passions. And he came to a much greater understanding of himself. In his own words, he would not have been president had it not been his, for his experience in North Dakota. It truly changed him. All the hardships, all the fun, everything he did. As with your hardships, your fun, all the projects upon which you embarked, we are going to change you forever and make you much stronger as you go forward. So, as I mentioned, your time at DSU in many ways compares to Roosevelt's experience. Many of you arrived on campus with few friends when you first showed up. And I'm sure everybody arrived knowing exactly the degree you wished to obtain, at least until the end of the first semester. <laughs> and then you pick yourself up and you either go forward or you change directions and found your true niche. But you had many responsibilities which you probably never had before. You had internships, working on and off campus. Now you have a role in the community. You had to live in shared spaces. My roommate thought I was the worst person in the world our first semester. I think he still does. <laughs> but you have to overcome those areas. You had to really search for your inner, inner, your inner self. And you had to find the passion that's going to drive you for the rest of your life. I'm going to give you a somewhat of a scary statistic right now, but it comes upon you quickly. You're going to walk out of here today, and you have about 40 to 45 years to work in your career prior to retirement. You want to make sure you're passionate about what it is you're doing. You want to make sure that you can get up every day and be happy with what it is you're doing. Not every day is going to be great, but over the long run, you should be content in what it is you're doing. Hopefully, we've set you on that path. And I believe that if you always be true to your inner self, always treat those around you with fairness and equity, you're going to travel very far in life. You will always remember this time. Always remember the bonds that you have formed here at DSU. They will become lifelong bonds. Never forget where you've been and what you've done. And this is always going to be your home. You will always be able to come back here. We will always be here for you to seek advice. And as you will realize, as you get more and more experience in your career, we'll be seeking your advice. We'll be seeking your counsel. And I hope that you remain as open to us as we will always remain open to you. You're graduating into a world that is changing faster than any, at any other time in human history. Global commerce is becoming ubiquitous. Jobs are going to continue to morph and merge, appear and disappear. Four out of the top 10 jobs listed today were unknown in the year 2000. And that is speeding up. The average graduate today spends about two and a half years per position before moving on or moving to a different area. You are part of an ever-changing world that will continue to accelerate. And I think that you are extremely well prepared for that world. You're going to be asked to be in more leadership roles than your previous generations. You're going to be asked to be more collaborative than any of the previous generations. You're going to be asked to work more internationally, even if you don't physically travel. You're going to be asked to work more internationally than any other generation before you. And I have great confidence that you are always going to do the right thing, and that you will succeed. And I want to stop today by one more, telling you one more item, which nobody will ever be able to take away from you. DSU began its very first class in the Elks Building downtown Dickinson in the summer of 1918. If you add up the years, folks, your class right now is a capstone to a century of educational excellence. And I could not be more proud than to stand here and have you as that class. So congratulations, graduate. Today is your day. Enjoy this. Thank you. <clears throat> and now it is my distinct pleasure to help welcome to the podium 
State Board of Higher Education representative, Mr. Mike Ness. A little bit about Mr. Ness. He's a superintendent of the Hazen, or was superintendent of the Hazen School District, where he was employed for 12 years. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in education from North Dakota State University. That's okay. We have an extension office here. That works. The big game tonight. He earned his Master's of Science in Education Administration degree from North Dakota State University, and he has been involved in K through 12 education as a teacher, principal, and superintendent in the Verona, Stanton, Center, Botno, and Hazen school systems during 42 years of work. Thank, that is, what a wonderful career. He brings a K through 12 educator connection to the board, along with his vast knowledge and professional experience. And he actually retired as superintendent of Hazen School on June 30th, 2015. Please help me uh, bring Mr. Mike Ness to the podium. Get this out of the way before we start. Go Bison. <laughs> Good afternoon, President Mitzel, faculty, staff, family, friends, and to the ones who've worked the hardest here today, the graduates of the class of 2017. On behalf of the State Board of Higher Education, I would like to congratulate you for all your achievements. I have spent more than four decades involved in education throughout the state, both in K-12 and most recently as a member of the board. Since taking on my new role, I've been reminded of, of the dynamics of our higher education system and everything that a student can take from it. One of the things I like to take from each of these visits to campus is going around the state. Few other milestones in individual's life can better represent the life-changing nature of college education than a culmination in graduation. The State Board of Higher Education may serve to shape policy and paths to offer as many opportunities for students' success as possible, but it is you who has to reach out and seek those opportunities. Your presence here today tells us that, all you, that you all succeeded in grabbing those opportunities and making the most of them. This commencement ceremony marks the formal completion of your respect, respective programs. Whether your interests took on a path through Dickinson State's programs in agriculture, business, nursing, teaching, or another one of the university programs, you'll all have to take on your unique challenges. A university education isn't only about preparing someone for a chosen field of work. It's about them looking at the larger world, which means to be involved in commu as a community member and engaged as a citizen. We're confident that Dickinson State has presented those paths to all of you, and I am hopeful that those graduating today will take what they've learned to help find success in whatever you decide to do. Perhaps, if DSU is lucky, many of you may come back here to teach the next generation of our students. Having spent more than 40 years in education gives me plenty of experience to say that I have no doubt that many of you graduating today will go on to do great things for yourselves, for our state and beyond. I know that I'm not alone in the pride I take from this role when I have the opportunity to see so many of you move on to the next phase of your lives. It's a big step. As you move forward in your lives, as you become part of new communities and thrive in your own right, you'll likely find new challenges for yourselves. Some of the challenges may be overcome by skills you've learned through studies. Some of them may, will be through your family and friends, what they have taught you, and that you've learned through experiences. Some of them will be overcome by creativity. Some of them will overcome through teamwork, but all challenges have a solution. Each holds a promise of success. As you face these challenges, whether they are known or one unknown to you now, remember what you've accomplished for yourself today. You've dedicated yourself to years' worth of study. Throughout the time that, you, that there were likely times of mo moments of anxiety surrounding tests, group work, or course choice. But the decisions on those choices helped you to get to this point, your graduation. When you throw your mortarboards into the air to celebrate the end of the ceremony and this phase of your life, Know that it's due to the same type of perseverance and hard work that will be required for you for the years to come. 
Thank you for placing your trust in our system and this university. We applaud your accomplishments and we're confident that the education you received will give you a competitive edge you need to accomplish more as you move forward. Your readiness to take on responsibility for yourselves has led to this clear success for you. Graduating class of 2017, this is it. You've gotten up each day to meet the challenges presented so far. You've, you've satisfied the requirements of this university, and I know that many of you had taken additional steps to give back to your campus and community. You should be extremely proud of each and every step you have taken to this point. Thank you for all your hard work. Let me congratulate the class of 2017 once more on a job well done. Thank you. So as a token of our appreciation from DSU to you, thank you very much. Thank you. Brayton Earhart grew up in Hazen, North Dakota as the oldest of Tom and Lynette Hildebrand Treasure's four children. Education has always played an important role in her life. As a child, she enjoyed being the teacher when she played school with her sister. Many of Brayton's previous teachers inspired her to pursue a career in education. But one teacher in particular stands out. Mrs. Rode, a second grade teacher, became a close family friend who would bring Brayton to her classroom over the summer to help her organize and decorate her room for the upcoming year. She was always sent home with plenty of gel pens, extra worksheets, books, and stickers. During high school, Brayton was involved with many activities, including student council, National Honor Society, Peer Youth Olympics, Math Track Meet, Science Olympiad, Golf, and Basketball Stats. She graduated from Hayes and High School, High School as a valedictorian in the class of 2012. Brayton received her Associates in Arts degree from Bismarck State College in the spring of 2014. She then applied to Dickinson State University's Distance Teacher Education Program to complete her mathematics education on the degree on the Bismarck campus. As a DSU student, Brayton attended meetings to help organize the Student Education Association for students in the teacher education program. She was an active member of SEA and held many leadership positions in the association. <clears throat> Brayton also served as a student representative for the DSU Teacher Education Council and continues to serve as a student representative on the North Dakota United Professional Development Committee. Her leadership positions have provided her with valuable insight in the field of education. Please welcome Brayton. Good afternoon, and thank you to all the family, friends, faculty, staff and alumni who are joining us today and celebrating this very special occasion. I'm graduating today with a degree in mathematics education. During my student teaching experience, I came across this quote from Robert Maynard Hutchins, who was a dean at Yale Law School and president of the University of Chicago. He said, the objective of education is to prepare the young to educate themselves throughout their lives. These words immediately struck me, and the more I pondered them, the more I believed them, and how fitting they were to me and my profession of education. But I also find them to be the perfect words to summarize today. Those of us who are graduating today have spent the last few years being inspired and driven by our professors to learn this lesson. We have been equipped with the skill to continue to learn throughout our lives and careers. In many ways, educating yourself requires relationships. One of the most important lessons I have learned during my time as a DSU student is the value of relationships. This lesson recently became crystal clear to me. As a first year DSU student, I had a unique opportunity to work with peers and professors 
to begin a student education association on our Bismarck campus. Through my membership in this organization, I held many leadership positions after there was enough interest to get the group up and running. The association provided me with a sense of belonging to socialize with other students, share similar interests, and participate in events that bettered our community schools. As my involvement with our local chapter grew, I continued to educate myself about the organization at a broader level. I became involved on a statewide committee that meets to discuss ways to provide professional development opportunities to our members around the state. We organized and funded a conference over the summer. During this time, I was also working as a substitute teacher. At this summer conference, I had the chance to meet one of the teachers for whom I subbed. We had a nice visit, and I didn't think much more about our chance encounter. Our conversation at the conference was enough to make an impression and begin a relationship. I later found out that she recommended me to the principal at Mandan High School for a last minute opening. A couple months after the conference, I received a phone call from the same principal encouraging me to apply. I was hesitant at first and did not consider what the outcome could be. I calmed down enough to think things through and I decided that I'd use this situation to practice applying and interviewing. This would certainly provide me with valuable experience to continue educating myself. During this time, I was very thankful for the mentoring provided by Dr. Mari Rasmussen of the Teacher Education Department. For that interview, I had never been more nervous in my whole life. My only comfort was that I would be teaching part of a lesson I had prepared. With my practicum experiences, I was confident in my abilities to deliver the content, and in general, I had been well guided by my professors in the teacher education department. That was until I found out my students were the principal, the assistant principal, and the chair of the math department. After the interview, I felt relieved to have one under my belt for the months to come. The next day, the principal called and offered me the position. My immediate thoughts were, I can't do this. I'm not prepared. I haven't even done my student teaching yet. After telling the principal I would consider the offer, I immediately called some classmates and professors from both the Bismarck and Dickinson campuses. I wanted to hear their opinions about how I should maneuver through this crossroad. Everyone I talked with was very excited for me. Their encouraging words helped me become excited too about this great opportunity I had been given. I am so thankful for the relationships I have built with them over the years. Had it not been for the support and encouragement from them and my family, especially my husband Jacob, I would not have taken the job. Needless to say, I love my job. Fast forward to October, and I'm speaking with the teacher I met at the summer conference in the copy room at Mandan High School. She's explaining the whole story to me, and I am amazed how one small event led me to today. The relationships I built with DSU faculty have come full circle. They encouraged me to join the student association where I built relationships with peers who have become lifelong friends. The relationships I formed at DSU helped get me to today. I am continuing to build important relationships with my students at Mandan High School, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to take pride in being one of the relationships that contributed to their success. To my fellow graduates, I hope you too look back fondly on our time as Dickinson State University students and recognize the principles, the knowledge, and the confidence that have been given to us through relationships for our ongoing self-education. The relationships that have blossomed here just may be some of the most important connections you will have throughout your life. Thank you.
I have a small token of our appreciation. We'd like to present you with this plaque. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Thank you. At this time, we will have some special music that will be provided today by the DSU Jazz Ensemble. They're going to play Moonlight in Vermont, music by Carl Sussdorf, and lyrics by John Blackburn. Thank you. On behalf of the faculty whom I represent today, I extend to you, the candidates for graduation, our most sincere congratulations on the completion of your degree programs. As you may note, the candidates are wearing blue robes and either blue or gray stoles. A gray stole signifies attainment of a Dickinson State University bachelor's degree, while blue signifies attainment of a Dickinson State University associate's degree. The history of academic regalia dates back to the 1300s and evolved from clerical dress with the primary functional purpose of being warmth. And I can guarantee you, they're warm. Robes vary in terms of fabric, length, sleeves, chevrons, all of which denote aspects of the degree earned. 
Some of our candidates will graduate today with honors. Their names and honor recognitions are listed in the program. They are also designated by gold cords or silver medallions. The gold cords symbolize academic honors and the silver medallions inscribed at the university seal designate students who are graduating with Theodore Roosevelt Honors Distinction. The degrees we are conferring today include a Bachelor's of Science in Education degree. This includes elementary, secondary, and physical education. The Bachelor of Science degree in disciplinary fields such as Ag, Business, or Exercise Science. The Bachelor of Arts degrees in disciplinary fields such as Art, English, History, Communication, and Theater. The Bachelor of University Studies degree and the associate's degrees in disciplines as listed in the program. <coughs> Excuse me. Will the candidates for all the degrees please stand? Dr. Mitzel, the academic records of these candidates have been examined and they have fulfilled the requirements for graduation for the appropriate academic degree as set forth by the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education and Dickinson State University. Therefore, I recommend the awarding of the appropriate degree that each candidate might enjoy the rights, honors, and privileges as pertaining to that degree. Candidates, by the authority vested in me by the State Board of Higher Education and the State of North Dakota, I hereby confer upon you the academic degree which you have completed. Graduates, congratulations. Now that your degree has been conferred, you need to switch your tassel from the right-hand side to the left. And now it is my pleasure to invite you to approach a platform to begin receiving your diplomas. Brayton Lee Earhart. Taylor Ashlyn Henningsgaard. Dylan Reed Jensen. Alyssa Hildebrand Wagner. Sean Byron Michael Elkins. Stephanie Marie Wajardo. Logan Ray Olson. Reba Marie Ressner. Seth Daniel Elaine. Seth Michael Evanuk. Austin James Fetch. Gabrielle Noel Hasek. Amber Rose 
Jordan. Alexander Peter Klein. Whitney Lynn Lewinberger. Ryan John Magar. Sabrina Diane Prouse. Taylor Douglas Ray. Caitlin R. Renner. Amber Irene Thorny. Jonas Asiedu. <laughs> Leslie Dakota Badoin. <laughs> Bridget Leslie Berg. Alexis Marie Beal. Tess Elizabeth Blackier. Irene Isabel Fetch. Catherine Mary Gobin. <laughs> Delmer Bryce Gorsline. <laughs> Deshaun Shakar Haynes. Michael Hacker. Yeah. Kelly Elizabeth Kirby. McKenna Ellen Kostelecki. Chad Mackey. Yusuf Adam Marafa. <laughs> Liana Ray Olson. <laughs> Lucas Allen Olson. <laughs> Mackenzie. Joanne Reisenauer. <laughs> Shailen Elise Sullivan. <laughs> Rachel Catherine Tim. <laughs> Sporidio Torikumana. Colby Eugene Wartman. <laughs> Katen M. Bennett. <laughs> Kyler Hayden Swan. <laughs> Sean. 
Chanel B. Zetch. Christopher Michael Douthit. Reginald Todd Fields, Jr. <laughs> Brianna Andrea Jasmine Grayson. Yeah. Helen Ann Henley. Anthony Matthew Michael. It is my pleasure to present the 2017 Fall Dickinson State University graduates. They are now alumni of our prestigious university, and at this time, I invite them once again to express their appreciation to those who helped them achieve this milestone. Parents, spouses, other family members, and loved ones, with a warm round of applause. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Chandra Klusman, who will say a few words on behalf of the DSU Alumni Association. Chandra Klusman is a 2015 graduate of Dickinson State University, originally from Fairview, Montana. She is involved in the business club, homecoming committee, as well as a residential assistant in the residence halls as a student. She works as a trust associate at American Trust Center and remains active in her alma mater by serving on the DSU Heritage Foundation's alumni committee. Chandra met her husband, Nathan, while attending DSU. They reside in Dickinson with her daughter, Ella. Please help me invite Chandra to the podium. Good afternoon. Uh, I had a minor heart attack, as I'm sure some of you just did also. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> President Mitzel, platform party, faculty, staff, honored guest, graduates, families, and friends. On behalf of Dickinson State University Alumni Association, I am proud to be among one of the first to say, congratulations, you did it. <laughs> you are a graduate of Dickinson State University and among the close to 15,000 alumni lo lo located around the world. As a graduate of DSU, I never imagined that I would love my alma mater so much. This place helps shape students into graduates. It prepares you for the next step in your journey, which is getting a job in the profession that you have worked so hard to attain your degree in. Over time, I hope that you feel the same love, compassion, um, and compassion for the alma mater as I do. This commencement exercise has become a tradition. It is a celebration not only for those of you, but also those sitting next to you in the stands, the, your family and your friends. The first class to graduate Dickinson State Normal School was in 1920, and that was when the DSU Alumni Association was established. Your Alumni Association knows the importance of Dickinson State University education. You are not only graduating today, but you are now officially members of the Alumni Association. Welcome. As an alum, I want you to remember a couple, things of, a couple of important things. First of all, as this chapter in your life comes to a close, please remember no matter where you are, you will always be a Blue Hawk. Secondary, 
S secondly, stay in touch with your alumni association. We want to hear from you. We also want to celebrate your successes and the successes of future alum. My third bid is uh, the most important. There is no other person that matters when it comes to measuring your own success than you. A lot of people hope to become rich or famous or successful. However, you are the one that sets the criteria on determining what is rich and what is successful. At the end of the day, you are, only, you are the only one that makes yourself happy. And as a Dickinson State alum, our biggest wish for you is happiness. I want you to now take a look around the room at your classmates, professors, staff that have also become part of your family. The graduates sitting next to you and everyone here in Dorothy Sickney Auditorium are your friends for life. That's the greatest treasure that you are going to take away. It is our hope that you will nurture your relationships and remain a big part of the DSU family. As individuals, you can accomplish a lot, but, you as, but as part of the DSU family, you can achieve a lot more. Take advantage of their resources, stay in contact with them, use them to assist you, your family, and your friends. This has become your home, and um, for many days to come, you may long to come back to DSU to come back home. We will always welcome you home. Just two short years ago, I was sitting in your exact same spot, thinking to myself, yes, I finally did it. That feeling of walking across the stage and knowing that after many years of on again, off again, on again, I finally finished my college career. I was not your tr traditional four-year college grad. I was a student who took some time off knowing that of course I would come back to DSU and finish my career. I just didn't know when. Um, after two years of many medical issues and not knowing what my future held, I took the leap and re-enrolled into DSU classes. That day was one of the scariest days of my life. I always knew I wanted to be a graduate of DSU, but thinking about having to go back to school was very scary. My college buddies were always, already graduated and on to bigger, better things all while I was just getting my foot back into the door. I was worried about how I would fit back into the school routine, routine, how I would ever be able to make time for my job, family, friends, and homework. Let's be honest, who has time for homework? Thankfully, it wasn't that scary at all. I was greeted by past professors, faculty, st and staff, who made me feel right back at home, like I had never left. I don't think I would have ever been able to do it if it weren't for my very encouraging mother-in-law, mother who I'm sure most of the faculty and staff know. She reminded me every single day that I could do it. And after six and a half years, I know, six and a half years of um, being enrolled in classes at DSU, I finally finished my college career, and for that I am grateful. I am now enjoying a very fulfilling career at American Trust Center and providing for my beautiful family. I honestly believe that if it wasn't for DSU, I would not be as successful as I am now. I am so unbelievably proud to say that I am a DSU Blue Hawk graduate. That being said, let me tell you again, congratulations, you did it. Thank you, Sandra, for sharing your time with us today. As we begin to wrap up our festivities, I want to remind all of you that we will be having a reception for all the graduates, all the friends, all the family. Anybody who wants to walk in the doors right outside in the first floor of May Hall, so please stick around and have some some nice munchies and beverages and good conversation. Uh, and we, we do hope you'll join us before you depart. And I now want to invite Dr. Carmen Wilson back to the podium. Now, as is our tradition of each commencement since 1920, 
Please stand and join me in the singing of the Dickinson State alma mater, the words of which are printed on the back of your commencement program. After the after the alma mater, DSU's senior faculty member, Dr. Marianne Marsh, will come forward to declare commencement closed. We ask that you please remain seated as the platform party, followed by the faculty, the students, recess from the auditorium to the reception. <coughs> I declare the 2017 Dickinson State University commencement ceremony closed. Congratulations, graduates. Yeah.